Supermarket bosses rejected claims of price gouging at a combative Senate committee hearing today. At one point, a top executive was threatened with jail time for refusing to answer questions. At war with Woolworths. I've answered the question many times. You have not answered the question, Mr we Banducci. On... The supermarket's reputation rebuild in a Senate committee, fast descending into an all-out brawl. I'm not interested in your spin or your bullshit. This is a Senate inquiry. Answer the question. Senator, I said before you very respectfully saying we would measure ourselves return very respectfully on respectfully not answering the question. Chief Executive Brad Banducci defending his company's $1.7 billion net profit for the last financial year. That number turns out to be about 2.7 cents in every dollar spent with us. If we decided to make no profit, zero profit for the next two years, that would be $5 difference a week recognising the family shops three times a week. Not enough to satisfy Greens Senator Nick McKim, who accuses Woolies of hiding the true extent of its profitability. Why won't you confirm what your ROE was? We focus on our return on investment. Right. It is open to the Senate to hold you in contempt, and that carries potential sanctions, including up to six months' imprisonment for you. Mr Banducci later agreeing to take the question on notice, the head of Coles eager to avoid similar combat. Our return on equity last year was 31%. It was a day on the defensive for the major supermarkets, rebutting claims of price gouging and defending the level of competition in the sector. It is a real feature of the market here that right out the side, the front of our stores, is where you will most likely find those um, competitors. A review of the Grocery Code of Conduct proposes mandatory rules for big players to follow and fines in the billions if chains abuse their market power. This is an incredibly competitive market. A quick escape for the Woolies chief, who will leave his role for good in September. Cameron Redden, Sky News, Canberra. Well, joining us live now is economist, competition lawyer and former ACCC chair, Alan Fells. Alan, good to see you. Thanks for your time. I know you've given your own evidence to that inquiry yesterday, but, geez, yeah. what did you make of those scenes we saw today? Is this threat of a press prison sentence for Brad Banducci just a bit of political theatre from senators or as someone who's been watching his conduct very closely for some time now, do you believe Mr Banducci has been going out of his way to avoid answering questions and deserves to be called out for contempt? Uh, he's not going to end up in jail. He shouldn't have a sleepless night. I think the ultimate answers to these questions will be found in another inquiry, the ACCC inquiry, which has got much deeper powers to investigate, to get to the bottom of things, to measure profits and markups and so on. Having said that, there are issues for the supermarkets to answer superficially the data seems to indicate their markups on what they buy and, and sell to us have gone up. And they've gone up, it looks to us, by more than costs because their net profit after tax has gone up. Now, we're also having this argument about whether it's the return on investment, return on equity. Uh, I think it's getting a bit technical and... Uh, I think the ACCC will be the arbitrator on it. Well, yeah, that is an important point. I'm sure that a lot of our viewers might have been scratching their head over that part because things did really go pear-shaped when the Green Senator, Nick McKim, who's the committee chair, asked Mr Banducci if return on equity was an important measure of corporate profitability. That's the question that Mr Banducci didn't seem to want to answer. In layman's term, why not? Why was that such a significant question? Well, it's very high because, as you just reported, um, it looks very high compared to the return on investment. Actually, with supermarkets, they normally try and tell you what their net margin is, and it's really low. It sounds humble. It's just that they get hundreds and hundreds of thousands of products going through those supermarkets real quick, and that tiny-looking markup magnified by those hundreds of millions is actually a big number. That's their bottom line, not their modest looking net markup. But their net markup does appear to have gone up somewhat during and after COVID. Now I'm not against profits going up, but I do think 
the public is not very happy to see that happen during or straight after COVID. No, not at all. And Alan, if you're a senator in that room today, what other key question would you have put to the supermarket bosses? As someone who's so close to this, what do you think we still are yet to learn? Well, I think I would want much more transparency about what's going on with the prices. We just, by the way, in the press, every day we read price going down, 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 and we go to the supermarket and we find they've gone up, up, up and we don't hear about that. So I'd like to know more about their prices and their markups, how they've changed, and a bit more about what they get, what they cop from their suppliers and how much they add to that. All we hear about is their supply prices have gone up, fine. How much do they add to those increases? That would be a start. The most fundamental question is whether there could be more competition and are they doing things that are impeding competition, new entrance or expansion by players like LD, Costco and others? Alan Fells, really appreciate your contribution. Thank you. As you pointed out, this has a way to run. We'll be watching it closely. Thanks so much for your time. Thank you.